Hello and welcome to this video breaking down exactly what you need to know when it comes to English language techniques and exactly what they are and what they mean. Now this video is really useful if you're preparing for your English GCSEs as I will look through important English language techniques that you should consider when answering your English GCSE language exams. Do bear in mind that we have an English GCSE language and literature revision course showing you exactly how to get a level 9 in all four papers so do ensure you sign up for it in the description box below. So let's get started. Now, when it comes to language terminology, the first is to do with nouns. Now, always remember that a noun is a place, personal thing. However, within a noun, there are different categories. Now, a common noun is a naming word for a thing that is tangible. You can touch it, you can taste it, you can see it, you can feel it. This is the opposite of an abstract noun. So an abstract noun is a naming word for a concept, a state of being or a belief, such as, for example, faith, English and so on. Whilst a common noun could be a table, a chair, tea, abstract noun are ideas, things like philosophy. This is different to a proper noun, which is basically a naming word for a person or place and you can easily identify it because you must always write it with a capital letter such as London, Paris, New York, America, USA, all starting with capital letters. Now, a verb is a word that represents an action or a process, such as running. However, within verbs, there is the active verb versus the stative verb. Now, an active verb is a word that represents a physical action, whilst a stative verb is a word that represents a process that usually is only mental, such as thinking, as opposed to an active verb, which is running, walking. Now, an adjective is a describing word that gives us more information relating to a noun, such as a red table. However, you will also come across a comparative adjective as well as a superlative adjective. Now, a comparative adjective is an adjective that relates one thing in some way to another and usually ends with er. For example, this table is bigger, that's a comparative adjective, than another table. This is in contrast to a superlative adjective, which is basically an adjective that displays the most extreme value of a quality and usually ends with est. For instance, this table is the biggest est of all tables. This is the, my best friend, therefore that means this particular friend is your closest out of all other friends. Now, an adverb is a describing word that modifies or gives us more information about a verb. For example, you're running quickly, you're waking up early, or you're going to sleep late. Now, pronouns are usually words that take place of a noun in a sentence, and the different types of pronouns that you will find. Now, you have the first person pronoun, which is I, and the first person plural pronouns, which are we, our, or us. This is different to second person pronoun, which is you and third person pronoun which is him, her, he, she, it and the third person plurals, them or those. This is distinctive from a possessive pronoun which shows ownership. This is mine item, mine, our, your, his, hers and theirs. All of these show some form of possession. This is in contrast to a demonstrative pronoun which is basically you're pointing out other objects, this, that or those. Now, when it comes to sentence types, when you're thinking about language, the first is imperative sentence. So this is usually a sentence that's issuing a command, for example, finish your dinner. This is different to a declarative sentence, which is basically a sentence that makes a statement. For instance, I feel tired. This is in contrast to an interrogative sentence, which is a sentence that basically asks a question, such as, is it possible to have a glass of water? And this, of course, is different to a rhetorical question, which is a question designed not to be answered. Usually it's used to pique interest or make a point, or, and usually it's a stylistic choice. For example, you wouldn't want that, would you? The final is an exclamatory sentence, and this is a sentence that conveys a strong sense of emotion, sense of alarm, or overly strong emphasis on something, such as, for example, watch out, which usually ends with an exclamation mark. Now, a simple sentence is a sentence that usually consists of one clause, which is basically a subject, verb, and object. For instance, the cat drank milk. This is different to a compound sentence, which is a sentence which has two or more simple sentences. For instance, the cat drank milk, which is a simple sentence and is joined with a conjunction and, and then it finishes off with the dog watched it enviously. The dog watched it enviously is also a simple sentence. However, combined together, both the cat drank milk and the dog watched it enviously is a compound sentence. 
Now, a complex sentence is basically a simple sentence joined by an additional part of the sentence that does not make sense independently, such as the cat drank milk and coughed up fur. So the part which says coughed up fur after the conjunction, this relies on the first simple sentence, the cat drank milk, to make sense. Therefore, this is a complex sentence. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do make sure you sign up for a complete English language and literature GCSE course, which shows you how to secure a level nine on all four GCSE papers. So make sure you check out our description box below for a link to this course. Thanks so much for watching.